what brings you to London? I'm guessing you're here talking to investors and putting your case, putting the investment case behind OMV. So what kind of feedback are you getting for investors? What, what work is still to be done at OMV? I think uh, investors are regaining trust in uh, OMV and uh, they realize that they are working hard on our strategy. And it's bringing back success. And we managed cost and cash flow last year extremely good. That's the reason why analysts are getting more in touch with OMB. Okay, and you talk about the cash levels there. You're, you're, you're planning some divestments. Um, Petrol Afisi, the stake that you have there in Turkey. Once you've divested that, you're going to have more cash to play with. What do you plan to do with the cash? Well, first of all, we would like to pay the dividend out of our operating cash flow. And secondly, uh, we will reinvest because we have to work on our replenishment of our reserves. And thirdly, we would like to bring down debt. Mm. Does, that, does that leave any space for purchases, for M&A, or it's very much more about balance sheet measures? than Absolutely. There? That's a fantasy we would like to address to the financial markets. Mm. Uh, when you look at the analysts' uh, estimates that you could get as much as $1.3 billion for Petrol Afisi, is that the, uh, the kind of number that you're looking at? What, what kind of, uh, of, of a number do you have in mind? We have received some binding bids, but we are now in the hot phases of negotiations, so I have to keep my number closed. You have to keep your number closed. Can you tell us who's in the mix still? What kind of businesses are still bidding, still interested? Well, there have been some reports and parties claim some claimed interest, uh, especially Saudi Arabia did uh, express an interest, as well as um, Azerbaijan. And as we have sold our terminal to Azerbaijan, to Soka, they are, of course, in the hot league. Mm. Well, let's talk a little bit about Russia, because this is one part of the business that uh, you've been talking about a little bit more, uh, trying to put pr more production uh, from low-cost areas such as Libya and Russia. L l let me ask you about Russia and your plans there. How successful do you expect them to be in relation to, to the divestments you're doing in Turkey? I mean, both considered areas of the world perhaps tricky to do business. Well, first of all, I'm more interested to invest into Russia because this is one of the lowest cost countries you really can find on our planet. And that's the reason why I would like to extend our cooperation with Gazprom, which is lasting nearly 50 years now. So we do know the partner and uh, we would like to extend our business towards Russia. It's a very, very nice prom area for natural gas, and that's the reason why we would like to step into gas production in Russia. Does the sanctions environment around Russia, does that have any bearing on, on your business and your ability to do business into Russia? Uh, not at all. Well, we, we are just looking at uh, the sanctions very carefully, and we are in full compliance with the sanctions. That's the reason why I think we have to focus on projects which you can do under the umbrella of the sanctions and uh, we are ready to do so. And, and the politics of course, as we mentioned, the sanctions environment, but uh, Donald Trump has been uh, more positive in his commentary around Russia. Are your bets on Russia, are they based at all on a changing political environment or is this separate from all of that politics? Well, first of all, I have to say I'm not really uh, listening too much what Donald Trump is saying about, uh, about Russia. For us, it's important what is a European-Russian relationship because I'm a European country. And as the U.S. president is always telling us uh, U.S. first, uh, our, I have to build on the European politicians. Okay. Um, how confident are you in terms of the production that you're getting out of your business? How confident are you that you'll be able to boost production by about 10% um, by early 2019? Correct me if that's wrong, but I think that's the, the, the target that you have at the moment. Now, we have scheduled for, for growth. Uh, already this year, we're, we're going to see a 10,000 barrels per day uh, production growth as we are restarted our production in Libya. So the most impact is coming from Libya as well as from Kurdistan. But we are well on track to come up with two new projects in 2018, uh, especially in the North Sea in Norway, and that's uh, an upside potential. Libya is not back fully on, on production capacity so that we can make uh, an upside potential up to 350,000 birds per day until the end of the decade. And how resilient is your business now to a longer term lower oil price? So if we see oil prices staying around this kind of level, how resilient is, is OMV? Well, we are planning with a $55 per barrel for 2017, and uh, we have to wait and see how OPEC compliance is going uh, to end up uh, uh, during 2017. But uh, on the mid to long term, we are planning with a $70 to $75 per barrel. I think the times are over that we do see a three-digit number as we speak about the oil price. 
that's more or less a conservative uh, planning, but I think in the long term we're going to see such an high price. You've been cutting um, upstream operating expense expenses to try and make your business more resilient in these uh, lower oil price environments. Uh, is that work done? Is there much more to do on that cost-cutting story? Well, we delivered 100% above our target last year, so we could make 200 million euros cost cutting in 2016. We have set a target of 250 million in 2017. We have reduced our ENA cost from 600 million to 300 million. All this is telling you that uh, OMV is working hard to continuously work on a strong free cash flow. You, we mentioned a little bit about U.S. politics and how we, you know, you tried to get on with business, I suppose, away from all that political story. European politics is in for a, a, an interesting ride in 2017. Austria has already been there to some extent with the populist, uh, the, the rise of populist politics, certainly making itself felt in Austria. Uh, are you confident for the European economy? Were you confident for the Austrian economy when you look around Europe? What do you see? Well, I see, I see that the uh, European uh, economy is more or less stagnant. This is what we have in our plans. But uh, what is more important for us Europeans is that we are going to stay as a union and that Europe is more and more working together, especially the politicians. So I'm, I'm very much a fan of the European Union. That's why I do regret that uh, we are going to see the Brexit.